Do you ever wake up in the morning and think, man, what are all the forces acting on the hip in the frontal plane? Just me? All right. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna look at hip forces and specifically in the frontal plane and where we should put the cane, whether on the opposite side or the same side. And then we're also gonna try and understand it with some key concepts to hopefully you guys can hang on to it for the long run. There's three concepts that are important in order to understand this. One is the definition of torque. Torque equals force times distance. Torque is a rotational force force in this case is going to be body weight pulling down the activation of gluteus medius at the hip in the frontal plane and then we're also going to have the cane as a force and then the distance is how far away those forces are from the hip joint with the femur and the acetabulum another concept that's important is that body weight produces an adduction torque in the frontal plane body weights in the middle pulling down and because that's on the medial side of where my hip joint is it's going to produce adduction torque joint reaction force jrf is similar to the amount of compression in a joint a jrf equals compression so pretty much if something's pushing down this way and pushing down on the other side over here you're going to add up what's going on over here and over here add them up and then the force is gonna be both of those things together going the opposite direction. If both things are pulling down, this is pulling down on this side and then that's pulling down over here, you're gonna add them together and the total amount is gonna be the amount of compression in that joint. And in this case, we're gonna be talking about the hip joint. What are we looking at? So we have our pelvis here. We have a sacrum, lumbar vertebrae, our hip joint and the femur. In this picture, we're looking at somebody without one leg, or let's say that they lifted their leg up off the ground. So I'm standing here with both legs on the ground and just bent my left knee, so now it's just my right leg. We wanna keep this pelvis completely level so that our hip doesn't drop. And so these are the forces that are involved to keep our pelvis level. So this first one in blue is gonna be body weight pushing down. So we're going to call this body weight pushing down this way and that's going to be producing producing an adduction an adduction torque. So you see how this is the uh, moment arm of this force. So this is the distance between the axis and the force. Therefore, it's going to produce a torque. And this torque is gonna to be wanting to shift the pelvis that way, which is an adduction, bringing this part of the pelvis towards this femur. That produces an adduction torque. And then to counteract that adduction torque, because we wanna keep our pelvis stable, we're going to throw in an abduction torque. So what does abduction? Primarily gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and the TFL. So let's say hip, hip abductors. The big one there is gonna be gluteus medius though. For the joint reaction force, which is what this one is in red, joint reaction force. How we get this arrow is we combine how big this force vector is and this force vector, combine them together and then have the force go in the opposite direction. And what we talked about earlier, joint reaction force is the same thing as saying the amount of compression in the joint. So when this pushes down, this is the pelvis is pushing onto that femur and then when the hip abductors contract it's pushing down onto that femur and so it's the amount of 
joint compression in the hip joint. That's what's normally happening. These are the three forces to keep our pelvis level. If we had somebody who had osteoarthritis or OA in the hip joint, this can be really painful. So let's say this is painful, a painful hip. And what's causing it to be painful, painful is this JRF, this joint reaction force, the amount of compression in that joint. So we have to decrease this joint reaction force in order to decrease this pain. One way to do that is with a cane. We're gonna add in a cane and let's put it on this side. So when they have their hand, heads up there, and they're pushing down this way, the cane is gonna push back on them and it's gonna produce a force this way, which is going to produce a torque going that way. So it's gonna bring the pelvis away from the femur. It's gonna produce a hip abduction torque. Abduction torque. This is extremely effective because of where they're pushing away. You can see that the moment arm is giant. So it's from this hip joint all the way over to where they're pushing down. So it's this giant moment arm. So for every one pound of force they push down and then the cane's pushing back up, it produces this big hip abduction torque and it's gonna be a one to seven or a one to eight. So for every one pound of force you push down, it's gonna be seven pounds or eight pounds of joint reaction force relief. And the big reason why is because as you push down here, it's not that you're separating the joint to decrease the amount of joint reaction force, but the idea is that you're, by producing this hip abduction force here, you decrease the amount that your hip abductors, the muscles, have to do. By increasing this hip abduction torque externally by pushing down with your upper body, then you decrease how much this produces and therefore you decrease the amount of joint reaction force. So we'll decrease this red line to there because then you decrease this arrow and then this arrow stays the same. So therefore you decrease the amount of joint reaction force. So if we got rid of this and then we put the cane on this other side, if the cane is over here instead of it being a one to seven ratio or a one to eight ratio, it's now going to be more like a one to one ratio. Because if you were to put weight through your hand and then the cane's pushing back up on you, you're gonna separate the pelvis a little bit and, and cause a little bit of relief at this joint, but it's only going to be a one to one ratio because you're just unweighting that hip joint. And so it's, it's a little effective, but not nearly as effective as having this abduction torque, which decreases the amount of force you need on your hip abductors, which will decrease the amount of joint reaction force. And at the same time, when we look at this cane, it's going to produce a hip adduction torque and adduction torque. And so when you push up, it's going to want to produce a torque that's going to be going in this opposite direction. So it's not nearly as helpful. These three forces are also a thing. If you were to check out the Trendelenburg gate or the antalgic painful hip gate pattern, for the antalgic gate and for the Trendelenburg gate, you see people lean over the involved side. So in this case, they're gonna lean over to, their, to the involved side, bringing body weight closer to the hip joint, decreasing the amount of body weight adduction torque. So decreasing the amount of torque that that causes, which will decrease the amount of torque that your hip hap abductors have to work, which will decrease the amount of joint compression 
for the antalgic gait, which will decrease the amount of pain. And then for Trendelenburg, when you lean over the involved side, you bring body weight closer over here and you're going to decrease the amount of demand on your hip abductors because you decrease the adduction torque. I hope this makes sense for you guys. If not, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer any questions you have. If this doesn't make complete sense, you could check out the Antalgic Painful Hip Gate Pattern video or the Trend Ellenberg Gate video. And I think I do a good job explaining it there as well. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for joining ABC and PT. See ya.